There's a plastic chemical in your blood right now and it did not get there by accident. It's in your food, your water, your makeup, and even the air you breathe. It's linked to hormone disruption, infertility, early puberty, and changes in childhood development. And the craziest part is that companies don't have to tell you. They know it's in there, but we don't. And your kids are the ones paying the price. I'm Dr. Yvonne Burkhardt, PhD toxicologist and mom, and this is the first chemical I tell every family to cut out because it isn't just common, it's designed into your daily life. And that's why they call them everywhere chemicals. Even if you're doing everything right, from clean snacks to filtered water to organic cotton, this stuff still finds its way and sneaks in, but it's not your fault, it is the system. But once you see it, you can't unsee it. And once you know about it, you can do better. And what's the fix? It's actually easier than you've been led to believe. In this video, I'll show you what this chemical is, where it's hiding, and how one simple swap can change the game for your family, so let's go. What is this chemical doing to your hormones? This chemical that we're talking about is called phthalates, one of the most powerful and overlooked hormone disruptors in your environment. Phthalates are part of a category called endocrine disrupting chemicals or EDCs. These compounds interfere with your hormones and that is not a small thing or something to overlook. That's because hormones regulate metabolism, fertility, brain development, sleep, and mood, basically every process in our body. And when they're disrupted, it doesn't just affect the one organ because all of your endocrine organs are connected in one entire system. And what are the symptoms? Oftentimes these can be vague and often dismissed. Things like fatigue, irregular periods, mood swings, and infertility. It is so common, but that doesn't mean it's normal. So if you or someone you love is dealing with any of these issues, this may be part of the reason and no doctor is testing for it. Phthalates have been shown to mimic estrogen, disrupt normal testosterone function, interfere with hormone signaling for both men and women. And the consequences are far and wide reaching and are backed by decades of science. Fertility struggles in both men and women have been observed with phthalate exposure. And phthalates have been shown to reduce sperm quality, impair testosterone production, and interfere with ovulation and hormonal balance in women. Phthalates are also linked to early puberty in girls. And early childhood exposure, especially during infancy, is associated with an earlier onset of breast development and menstruation, which increases long-term health risks. And studies show that earlier onset of puberty, including pubic hair development, has been associated with prenatal monoethyl phthalate concentration in girls. And this particular type of phthalate is commonly found in personal care products. Breast cancer is another risk, because phthalates can mimic estrogen, they can bind to hormone receptors in breast tissue, especially during sensitive developmental windows like puberty when breast cells are already rapidly dividing. This signal is then throwing basically a wrench in the works and is like a dumpster fire in that situation. Significant associations were observed between urinary phthalate concentrations and increased risk of breast cancer, specifically for dibutyl phthalate, in a case-controlled study on women in India. Phthalates are also linked to neurodevelopmental and behavioral changes in children. Studies link prenatal and early life exposure to phthalates with cognitive delays, behavioral issues, and ADHD-like symptoms. And here's why this is an urgent matter and why I often speak about this. Babies are being exposed before they're even born. Phthalates have been detected in umbilical cord blood, breast milk, and even newborn urine samples, meaning these hormone disrupting chemicals are reaching children during their most fragile and delicate developmental windows. We wouldn't feed babies synthetic hormones, but that's exactly what's happening through plastic packaging, scented baby wipes, and baby lotion. And the scariest part is that hormonal interference during development can reprogram biology in ways that may not even be reversible. So these effects can be permanent. But this exposure is measurable and modifiable, meaning it's avoidable. So once you understand where these phthalate chemicals are hiding, how they behave, you can make small, simple, practical changes that dramatically reduce your toxic load. Here's the tricky part with phthalates. 
they don't stay put. These chemicals are known to leach from plastics over time, and that leaching speeds up with heat, friction, acidic pH, or contact with fats, and even UV exposure. So even sealed products can slowly release them into your food, water, air, and then they can even bind to the dust in your home, being recirculated and re-exposing you over and over again. So every single time you microwave leftovers in plastic, pour hot tea into a plastic lined cup or use a plastic tea bag, spray the counter with a scented cleaner, drink bottled water, vacuum and stir up dust in your home. You're likely adding to your phthalate load without even knowing it. And unfortunately, this exposure is happening continuously. These exposures can stack up day after day until they quietly tip the scales. And one of the most overlooked yet powerful contributors. You guessed it, we've already talked about it, household dust. Phthalates cling to these airborne particles and settle onto surfaces of your home, especially homes that have a lot of plastic, synthetic materials and scented or fragrance products. Kids are especially vulnerable to these chemicals because they crawl, they mouth toys, breathe more air pound for pound than adults. And that cozy layer under the crib might actually be dosing your child with hormone disrupting chemicals. But even worse, high phthalate levels in dust inside your home has actually been linked to respiratory inflammation and allergic symptoms in children. And here is something that I see all the time. Let's say you're trying to keep your home clean. So you wipe down the counters and you spray the sink and maybe you feel like lighting a candle every now and again. But the very products you're using might be doing the exact opposite of what you are intending. That's because fragrance is a loophole. It's a catch-all that lets companies throw phthalates and dozens of other chemicals of concern into our products without having to disclose what's in them. But just like exposure is cumulative, so is taking action you can start stacking these actions because once you know where these phthalates are hiding, you can start to reduce your toxic load quickly. And the good news is that phthalate half-life is about two to three days in the body. So once you start cutting these out, your levels can drop pretty quickly. Avoiding phthalates can be pretty simple, like swapping out a plastic container for glass or stainless steel, choosing fragrance-free cleaners, and saying no thanks to those takeaway coffee cups. That's already three exposures reduced in a few minutes. And those types of little shifts are actually creating a safer, more resilient environment and body for you and your family. One of the very first changes that I made actually when I started living low tox, and the one that I still recommend to every single mom I speak to is to start with your food first. When I started um, removing processed and ultra processed foods and instead focusing on real whole ingredients, the shift in my body was almost immediate. I mean, within a few days and I felt even better over time, I started to notice my energy come back pretty quickly because every morning before that felt like I was wearing lead boots, like physically and mentally. I was so fatigued. I had terrible brain fog. The bloating was unbelievable. I was so inflamed and I just was dealing with it. And I thought that's just what was happening to me now. But then once I switched out my diet for the first time in so many years, I actually slept seven to eight hours and I woke up feeling rested and refreshed. Whereas before I would sleep nine plus hours and still feel exhausted and just a complete mess. And I was just waiting to get my hands on some coffee. So ever since I made the switch, I never look back and cooking at home has become non-negotiable. And a lot of people want to make the excuse that they don't have time to cook, but you know what? Make it a priority like I did. Don't make it something that you gimp on or sleep on. Make sure that you make time to cook because you will notice a difference once you start cutting out processed foods. If I were to eat processed foods now, I would definitely feel it the next day. And that's not to say that I don't eat any processed foods. I definitely have snacks here and there. Sometimes I'll have a processed meal if I eat out or something like that. Sometimes it's unavoidable if you're traveling. But in those cases, I try to make it up by having more consecutive days of better foods and resting more and just taking care of myself to make up for that hit. And over time, you will start to notice a difference. It is inevitable.
And here's the thing, it isn't just about cutting out toxins for me. It was about rebuilding the resilience from my body that was lost because of all those years of a toxic lifestyle and remembering what it felt like to feel good again. And now that I know what it felt like to feel horrible, I'm not going back. So if you're waking up tired, if your legs feel heavy and you have brain fog and you feel like you rest for hours and you're not fully rested or you try to sleep, there's one thing I want you to know that there is another way and you don't have to continue feeling like this because it does get better. So let's talk more about it. So now you understand where these phthalate chemicals are hiding, how they move through our daily lives. Now let's talk about what you can actually do about it. These five realistic and research back swaps are powerful because they don't require perfection, just intention and action. Because every single time you make one of these changes, you are voting for your health. You're depositing money into your health account. You're depositing energy into your family and your future. Swap number one is to cook from fresh, unprocessed ingredients. This is the single most effective thing you can do is cooking more meals at home using simple whole food ingredients and avoiding the packaged stuff. And research backs this up. It shows that people who eat more fast and ultra processed meals have significantly higher levels of phthalates in their urine, while those who eat mostly home cooked meals don't have that same level of exposure. And that totally makes sense. And this one shift could cut your phthalate levels drastically within a few days because phthalate half-life is pretty short. Swap number two is to stop heating or storing food in plastic. Even plastic that is labeled BPA free can leach harmful chemicals, especially when heated or when it comes in contact with oily or acidic foods. Studies confirm that plastics release phthalates and other toxic substances during microwaving or long-term storage because time is also one of the factors that determines leaching. PVC and soft food grade plastics are especially problematic. So every time you heat your leftovers in plastic, you are rolling the dice with your hormones and your kids, which is probably something that you don't want to do. Switching to glass or stainless steel containers is one of the simplest long-term investments that you can make for your health. Not to mention with plastic, you're going to have to keep replacing it. And glass doesn't stain if you were to put tomato sauce in it. That's another great aspect. Swap number three is avoiding products that contain fragrance or perfume. This is one of the most overlooked and most powerful and easiest changes that you can make. Because if you can read, you can spot the word fragrance or perfume on an ingredients list. Phthalates are often added to personal care and cleaning products under the vague umbrella term of fragrance or perfume. And again, manufacturers are not required to disclose the chemicals that are actually inside. But if you were to check the International Fragrance Association or IFRA website, look for their transparency list and search for phthalates, you will see that they are basically telling you, yes, we put phthalates in fragrances. It's right there. Research also shows that people who use multiple fragrance products tend to have elevated levels of phthalates in their bodies. So if a label says lavender with a whole bunch of other ingredients and you look closely at the label, you're likely to find the tiny little word fragrance tucked in there. But what it doesn't say is phthalates, carcinogens, reproductive toxins, because that's what's in there. Instead, opt for fragrance free products or ones that clearly list essential oils, plant ingredients, and every single ingredient on the label. I've seen products lately that will say fragrance and there's an asterisk and it'll tell you what the essential oils are that make up that fragrance. Or if it just says made from essential oils, that is a much better bet than just getting fragrance that doesn't have any explanation. Swap number four is to replace vinyl based items with natural alternatives. Many baby products, shower curtains, and mattress covers are made from soft vinyl PVC, which often contains phthalates in order to make it flexible. Studies show that homes with more vinyl materials tend to have higher phthalate levels in dust. And of course that dust becomes a stream of steady exposure, especially for babies who crawl and toddlers and children who sit or lay on the floor because their airways are then closer to the floor where dust accumulates. So things like gentle baby mats, safe waterproof covers, they might not be as safe as they look. Instead, look for alternatives that are made from organic cotton, wool, or even food grade silicone whenever possible. 
Swap number five is to filter your tap water or even boil it if you can't afford a filter. So remember, yes, even your drinking water can be a source of phthalates. Phthalates can leach into water through aging pipes. A lot of pipes are made out of PVC and plastic plumbing or other tubing that's used during water treatment. Studies have detected low levels of phthalates in tap water across regions, especially in homes that have PVC piping. So filtering your water with an activated carbon block or reverse osmosis filter can significantly reduce these contaminants and a whole bunch of others. And if you can't source a filter, even boiling your water can help to reduce exposure to some contaminants. But evidence shows that filtering is really your best bet because clean water is a necessity. Remember that you don't have to do everything. You don't have to be perfect. But what you do need is to be aware of these things so that you can make some of these swaps within minutes and you can make informed decisions about what you decide to bring into your home. Remember one choice at a time, one swap at a time and over time this adds up because it really does stack. So I'm curious to know what's the first swap that you're going to be making today. Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.